Jake. Oh, hey, you too. How's it going? Well, I just want to say thanks, everyone, and give some uh, follow-up feedback on the last video I posted about my uh, low-level turn at Kapawai in Wellington. Before we get started, have you got a hair problem? Problem solved. Finally, we've got pure glide bucket hats. Fun fact, the colours aren't actually a rainbow, it's sunset over the ocean. This is the light blue denim, and we also have standard cotton bucket hats. Here's dark blue. All right, on with the video. So quite a few other people asked, uh, why didn't I use my motor? And there are two reasons. One, I was in a contest. So my goal was to get across the finish line without starting the motor because that's the same as landing in a paddock. You forfeit the contest day essentially and lose lots of points. Now you have to be careful not to let that influence your decision making and in this case it probably did to some extent. The second reason I didn't start the engine is I was just too low. So if you watch my videos on how the engine works in the glider, it takes time to lift it up, it takes time and you've got to do a dive start to get it going. You can't do that anywhere near the ground. And that's how people uh, crash and kill themselves, trying to fluff around with the engine at low level. You've got to do it while you're higher. Also, I thought I was simply in range of the airfield and uh, obviously I was lower than I should have been but I was pretty confident I could make it back to the airfield. I still should have landed in one of the paddocks on the way to the airfield instead. Another common question was, was I tired or stressed that day? And yeah, I was a little bit, and that probably didn't help. I don't think it was a major contributing factor, but you know, if you're not in a perfect frame of mind to fly, maybe you shouldn't be. So the other thing a lot of people mentioned was uh, my turn onto final and it wasn't a very good turn at all. I was using a bit too much rudder so they were pointing this way when I was trying to turn like they were doing this as I was trying to turn left which is a bit more dangerous because uh, that makes it easier for the glider to stall. This particular glider is quite short. Just hitting some turbulence and things you, you see my yaw strings yaw around a lot and that's because the glider is not very long. So a longer glider like my previous one is a bit more stable in that regard with the yaw. What people commented on the most was the fact that I opened my brakes during the turn. Now, when you open your air brakes, that does increase your stalling speed slightly, which means you'll stall earlier. So let's test this out and see how it works. First of all, make sure I've done my checks height, airframe straps, secure, security, everything's secure, location is good, over farmland it's good, location, lookout, make sure there's no other gliders right underneath me, I've come out from the ridge so I'm reasonably clear, that is good. So I'm going to stall the glider, now I'm going to put it in my landing flap, which is positive two, I'm going to slow down, whoop, don't go into cloud, good one Tim. It's a very thin cloud, here we go, we're out of the cloud now. Okay, I'm in positive two landing flap and I'm gonna just see what this natural stalling speed is without any turn. So there we are at 45 knots, 42 knots. And I can feel the juddering, so it's about 44 knots, 43, 42 knots, there we go. So stall speed in this configuration with this wingspan, positive two flap, 42 knots. So now let's try it again, but I'll get my brakes out. And I'll have them about half out. Glider is stalling at 43, 44 knots. So a couple of knots, basically, it makes a difference. So the argument is you should never get your 
brakes out during a turn. So let's try a turn. And I'm going to go close to stall speed, let's say 45 knots. And we'll do a bit of a turn. Let's get speed right. 45 knots. It's pretty slow, but not stalling. There we go, 45 knots. Now I'm going to start a, a very gentle turn, or a reasonable turn, I should say. So there, let's see what the natural stall speed is while I'm in a turn. It feels about 45 knots. 43, yeah, I can feel the juddering there. 43 knots. Okay, that's good. Now let's test doing the same thing, but we'll pull the air brakes out. So we're near the stall, let's say 45 or so. Going into a turn, doing a turn, and now I'm going to pull the air brakes out. And this might trigger a stall. Nope, it's very benign. Let's go a little bit slower. I was about 47 knots there. Let's try it about 45. Oop, too slow, too slow. 45 knots. Okay, and suddenly air brakes out. And you can see it took a moment, but it did go into a stall eventually. So you can see it's a couple of knots stall speed that you get if you open your brakes. Anyway, that turn I did, I was going 60 knots. So you can see I had a spare 15 knots on top of where it would stall. So even opening the brakes during a turn would not create a stall. Now that might change if it was a high speed turn and more g-forces were being created. So the question is, is it okay to pull your air brakes out while in a turn? And in general I'd suggest beginners especially should not do that. And the reason is if you're close to the stall and you're not really aware of it, pulling out the brakes could be that difference that triggers you into a stall. If you've got plenty of airspeed on then there's actually no reason not to open your brakes in a turn. And you should be well above your stall speed when near the ground. So, in my opinion, it's perfectly acceptable to open your brakes in a turn. Do I get the brakes out around the turn? Yeah, why not? fun little uh, wintry flight wasn't it thanks for coming along for the ride we'll catch you next time guys and girls see you later